Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about how to keep a Youth Academy realistic on FIFA 22. Nearly everything in this video also applies for FIFA 19, 20 and 21, so if you're playing one of the older games, don't worry, it will all apply for you as well. I've come up with six different tips to help you make your Youth Academy a bit more realistic. My favourite one is at the end of the video, so make sure you stick around or, you know, skip ahead to that one straight away, and I think you'll really enjoy it. But let's get started with the first one. If you want to keep it realistic, the first thing you need to do is make sure that your Youth Scouts are at the right level for your team. If you're keeping it fully, fully realistic hardcore mode, you're probably going to have three star scouts in the Premier League, two stars in the Championship and one star in League 1 and League 2. You can always apply this to other leagues as well, of course, if you're playing somewhere like the Portuguese League, it's about the same level in between the Premier League and the Championship, so maybe go for some twos and some threes. If you're playing in the Dutch top division, probably go for threes because they've got a good youth academy focus. So always try and make sure your scouts are the right level for the team you're at. If you're in League one and you've got three sets of five star five star scouts you're going to be absolutely flooded by every single good youth player on the game it's kind of unrealistic to even have a single player with 90 potential at that level but if you've got three five star five star scouts you'll probably have 10 or 11 in your youth academy at any one time which is a little bit overpowered and i'm sure you'll agree not that realistic Another tip that is similar and quite related to the first one is that you don't actually have to use all three scouting slots. I know a lot of people do because they want to get as many youth players in or they want to scout a bunch of different nations at once, but when you're a smaller team, I would recommend only really scouting a single nation. When you're a bit bigger, so again, talking going into the championship, I would probably scout your home nation and one other realistic nation. In the championship, this could be somewhere like Republic of Ireland, it could be somewhere like Scotland, France, Holland, Scandinavia, the sort of places that you would expect these nations to scout. When you finally get into the big leagues, you're maybe in the Champions League or even the Europa League, I would go for getting all three scouts and probably getting them at three stars. Like I said, this does pair well with the first one. If you're in League One or League Two, you should probably only have a single really bad scout. It's just how it works at that level. They don't have these massive youth academy farms churning through really good prospects. A third tip that I've come up with is to make sure that you are giving your Youth Academy players debuts after they turn 18. I know you can promote them as soon as they're 16. A lot of people do this and instantly give them first team matches. Um, if you do wait until they're 18 or keep them until they complain even, it makes them not overgrow, so you won't end up with 21-year-old players with 90 overall, but it also means you won't be ruining their potential by them playing pretty poorly in matches. If you wait for them to increase in overall as they're in the academy getting trained, then when they come through to the first team, you'll be able to play a better standard of football with them. It's kind of a double-edged sword. Not only does it help you out in-game, but it also keeps it a bit more realistic by just saving them a few years until you give them their first team debut. My fourth tip is setting a potential cap based on your division. So to keep it realistic, you don't want to have 11, 90 to 94 potential players in any league. Most teams will probably have two to three players with 80 to 85 potential and the other eight to nine in their youth academy will be 70 to 80 potential. If you combine having a potential cap with limiting your youth academy to only having one player in each position, for example, if you're playing 4-3-3, have one goalkeeper, four defenders, three midfielders and three attackers, then you really can limit the uh, overpoweredness of your youth academy. If you're noticing you're using a lot of your wingers when you're playing a 4-3-3, you're always passing the ball to them and they're doing most of the work, then maybe make sure that those two players have really good potential, your left and right wingers in your youth academy, and then cap the ability of every other position in your team. I think this would be a realistic thing. If a manager notices that he likes a certain kind of player, maybe you're playing 3-5-2, you need really good wing backs then you would be focusing on getting them to be as good as possible and maybe neglecting the other areas of your youth academy. So I think that's a good way to do it. Make sure that you only have one player in each position. I always have been doing this since FIFA 17 and it's always been pretty fun, especially when you notice you get a new talent in a report and you have to decide who you're going to release. Um, it is pretty fun and I think it is realistic to do that way. And then also set your potential cap to something that's realistic for your league. If you're in League 2, for example, you might want to set this to be 75 potential. So this means you don't sign any players with over 75 potential. Um, if you're in the championship, maybe you go for 80 potential because there are quite a lot of players at that level with 80 potential. That's another realistic way to do it. And then finally, my final tip and my favourite on this entire list is consider making a youth intake day. 
Anyone who's played Football Manager will know what this is. Every single year, on one day of the year, you get all your youth players come into your football team. You can kind of recreate this experience on FIFA by sending all your scouts out for nine months. On their final report month, have a look at all the reports, so don't sign anyone before the nine months is over. On the last day, have a look and see who they found, and then just pick 11 players, so one player for each position in your main formation, and discard the rest of the players that your scouts have found. This is your new youth intake for that entire season. Wait a couple of months, send them out again. And I think this is good because it lets the AI teams have first pick of the players you're scouting. It makes the AI develop good young players too because they will have picked up probably half of the players on these reports already. And it means you won't always have all the best generated players. It also means each season you'll get this new batch of 11 new players. You can decide which ones of your old batch you want to keep. I mean, you might have one or two that you prefer from last year that you still haven't promoted, and then you can keep them instead. If you've ever watched any video I've done on the MLS, this is basically the exact same thing as how you can recreate the MLS draft on FIFA 22 as well, by sending out your scouts for a long time and waiting to see the reports and just seeing them all on one day. I think that having a youth intake day is a bit more realistic to how it works in real life. It's actually quite unrealistic for players to constantly be being signed from youth scouts at 16, 17 years old. In real life, of course, it all happens a lot younger. So you can consider that these aren't actually youth scouts. This is just players that already exist in your youth academy. And you can pretend it's your head of youth development or director of football who's just presented you this massive list of all these players that are already at your club. And you can offer them first team professional deals. I think this is a pretty good way of doing it and I'll probably always be doing this in my future Youth Academy saves because I think it's really fun. I think it's a good way to kind of resemble what happens in Football Manager and it's a little bit more realistic in my opinion. Hopefully you've enjoyed some of the tips in this video. If you've got any tips of your own, please do leave them in the comments below. I love reading them. I know a lot of people in my community like reading comment ideas as well. And there's always one or two in there that are way better than anything I've ever thought of. So make sure you go read them too. Like the video if you enjoyed any of the tips and subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this in the future. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you very soon for another video. Thank you and goodbye.